What's going on everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Jones Flight Academy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the P1 camera sensor in relationship to what we always hear people advertising and boasting claims about is centimeter degree accuracy. Can we really get centimeter grade accuracy results and project deliverables out of a camera sensor like this? What do we have here? This is a top of the line camera sensor. There's no doubt about that. This is 48 megapixel camera. This is a full frame sensor. This has a mechanical shutter. This has interchangeable lenses where we can go ahead and obtain any GSD at any flight altitude. So in terms of something like this, I don't think that we're going to be able to achieve better results than a camera sensor than something like this. For those of you that are really kind of starting out in the survey grade markets as someone that can go out there and fly and collect data and possibly produce and promise certain deliverables to clients that they're gonna be using for survey grade, we really need to break down the true workflow process and how the items that we're gonna be using overall are gonna also affect our final deliverables. So a camera like this is gonna be used for photogrammetry, where we're actually going to collect the data and then bring that data into something like Pix4D and process the data. But just inside all of that, there is a lot of workflow process that we have to consider. So are we laying down ground control points? What is the size of the project? Then there's the terrain following part of this. We can engage terrain following and have the aircraft stay at a designated altitude above our flight line. That's gonna increase our vertical accuracy significantly. Are we using RTK? Are we using RTK with the base station? Is that base station referenced to a very good known point? And what equipment are we shooting with our control shots and our ground control? When we're actually putting the down rod directly right on top of our known point, how close and exact is that? Are we putting that over that known point? The speed that it's written to the card, the delay, the calibration of the right speed. Are we getting control check shots and laying them down as well? bringing them into something like PIX4D, going through any potential errors and seeing the difference between control shots and really trying to dial in that data. So you can see there's a lot of variables that can overall affect project accuracy and our precision. When you hear a company claim center beer level accuracy, they're actually referring to a term called precision. Precision is different than accuracy. Let's talk about both. Precision is the consistency of our points of data, and accuracy is overall where those points are in relationship to a target and how accurate they are. So you see the samples of the hover test that we're showing you. That is showing that the RTK system on those aircrafts are high precision. They're not moving around, they're staying very consistent in the same spot. Now that you understand both, let's go ahead and look at an aircraft that claims center meter level accuracy. In all reality, they mean center meter level precision. And again, it's the aircraft being precise and not moving around. That doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate as far as the overall absolute accuracy to where it is on planet Earth, although it is much tighter than a commercial grade GPS system. So again, we're talking about each component in relationship to each other. A lot of people really overlook precision. And when we're really looking at something like a Trimble device that we're actually going to lay down ground control and check shots, there is an overall precision limitation even to that equipment. That equipment is anywhere between 30 to 60 to $80,000. So 
even that has limitations to that. And when you really look at the numbers and the math, realistically, we're going to be limited to about a tenth of a foot of accuracy overall on our project. And that's why you're not going to find any reputable survey company that's going to promise any deliverables to any client that is better than one tenth of a foot. And one tenth of a foot is more than one centimeter of accuracy. So that's how we're breaking all this down because after the photogrammetry process, that's where we're going to go ahead and bring our work into like line work or even into CAD, which is going to allow us to produce survey deliverables. So to conclude, this camera sensor is going to help us get better accuracy and precision for our projects overall. But we're still at the mercy of everything else in the chain for absolute accuracy for the project. For those who are just, again, starting out in the survey industry and markets, you know, we cannot promise survey services to any client unless we have a license to be able to do so. But what we can do is be able to collect that data, bring that data in, process even the data, and then is, but we can't certify the data and we're not gonna really present or advertise our services as survey services like line work and or CAD services. So again, a lot that goes into all this. And you know, I get a lot of customers asking me all kinds of questions about this camera sensor, what it can do, what its limitations are, what they can do with it, how can they make money with it in terms of survey grade work. And I thought it would be a really good opportunity here to, to discuss those questions and they answer them in this format. So if you're in the market for a Matrice 300 or a P1, you can purchase them directly through our new website. If you have any questions, go ahead, put them down in the comment section below or reach out to us directly. We'll be glad to talk to you, work you through all this process. It's a lot of data, there's a lot to consider regarding a lot of these different factors. So I hope this helps. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.